Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to design this DV Builder footer. So I'll be showing you step by step how I, I added these four columns and added all this information inside and also how to make it global so that we can use it on all the pages on our website without creating every single time. Also, this footer is responsive. So if I come over here to my tablet view, you can see that it is displayed beautifully and then if I come over here to my mobile view again it looks really really nice. Today's tutorial is made possible by divicake.com. Check out their huge selection of Divi themes, layouts and plugins. Link is in the description below. And also if you want to take your Divi designs to the next level I have a course which I think is beneficial for you. This course covers everything that you need to know about Divi and also show you some design tricks to make your website look really really professional. And also if you haven't bought Divi, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link I will give you access to this course absolutely free. Alright so without wasting a lot of time let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the visual builder and then just get rid of what I've designed so far. So over here, I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom and just delete this. Right, so what we're going to do is to start off by adding a brand new section. So we're going to click this plus button, click on regular. Now what we need here is four columns. So I'm going to select them and then I'm just going to close this for now. So the first thing we want to do is to start by adding our background color for this section so I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to come over here to background add our color so I want to start off with um, really dark gray so next we're going to add our image so I'm going to come over here to this third tab click the plus button and we're going to add our image so pretty much for this you can add any image you want but I'm just going to go with this one for now upload an image so you can see here that my image has now been added, which is great. Next, I'm going to come over here and change my background image blend. And we're going to select multiply for this. So straight away, you can see that our, uh, the image now has been dimmed. So we can always come here to the first tab and adjust that color. So if you really want to make it dark, we can just push this to all black. And then we can lower the opacity slider here. So this opacity slider allows you to add as much light as you want into this image. So we just want to make it just a little bit so we can slightly see what is happening there because that's not the focus of this footer. The main focus is the content that's going to go on this footer. Okay, so now that we have this set, we are going to um, customize our padding for this footer. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over here to design, spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 10% margin and see how that looks. So 10% to the top, I'm going to copy that and paste it to the bottom. So now we have 10% to the top, 10% to the bottom. So now we've just added a bit of um, breathing space to our design here. We may come back in and increase our padding, but let's go ahead and start designing our page. So I'm going to save for now. Next, we're going to start adding all our elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to come uh, into this row and go into our first module. So our first module is going to be an image module. So I'm going to search for it and then click on image. And then over here, I'm going to upload the image. So what we're going to add here is a logo. So the logo that I'm going to add is already on my media library. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it. Click on up upload logo. So now our logo has been added. Great. I'm going to save this. Next, we are going to add a text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my module, select it. And then I'm going to come over here to Lorem 2 because I always like coming over here to use the text from Lorem 2 because it just saves me from typing. Right, so I'm going to come back over here. And firstly, I'm going to add my text in the text mode like that. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a a title and then I'm going to add some uh, lines in here because we are going to be adding some bullets later on so I'm just adding some space and then we may need just one more right so I'm gonna add this one as well and then over here I'm just gonna make sure that the beginning of my sentences have caps great so I'm just gonna remove the full stops just to make it all look the same right great 
Okay, so now I'm going to go to the visual mode, and then I'm going to make sure that this is set to heading 4. So remember, if you want this to be set as a heading, you want to add a space between that. So I'm going to select it now, and then I'm going to add my heading 4. So you can see here that it's just been added. We may want to remove a bit of text here as well, just so that it's in one line. Next, I'm just going to add some spaces between these lines like that and then I'm going to highlight everything and then make them bullets like that. So for some reason the bullets are on the top and the text is on the bottom. So what I normally do is I just delete and then just make sure that everything is in the same line. Okay, right. So we're off to a good start. We can see here in our visual builder that things are working out and uh, I can also maybe get rid of a bit of this text as well. Okay, so now everything is all in one line. So these could be links to other pages on your website or even external pages. So you can always go in and make those links. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight here and add my link. And then for now, I'm just going to add blank links like that. Okay, so you want to go ahead and just do that to all the links. But as I mentioned, these links should be links that point to specific pages onto your website or even pages to other websites. Okay, I've just got one more to do. Then I'm gonna paste it like that. Great, so now we have all our links and we can see them here. Now we can see that these links have taken a color which is our main color that we have on our website and this is our accent color. So we can always go ahead and uh, make the changes to these once we go into the design mode. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click on design, text, so over here, you can specifically go in and customize the bullets. So I'm going to click here to customize the bullets. And then I'm going to increase my size here for the text. So I'm going to make it 18. And then I'm going to come over here on the line height. I'm going to increase that a little bit, maybe to about, I'll say 1.6. Great. Now I am going to come over here to the second tab. So this is how we customize our links. So we can come over here to our link text color and we can actually specifically add a color in there. So I'm just going to add this color here. It's light gray. That seems okay. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to scroll down here to our heading text because we need to customize that heading four. So make sure you choose the H4 tag and then you want to increase the size a little bit to about 22. And then I'm going to change the color. Right, so I'm going to go with this color here so it really stands out, but I'm just going to reduce and add a transparency there. So I'm really happy with that because this color goes with our website, so it's great. Right, so now that I'm happy with that, in fact, we may want to reduce the size a little bit, 21. Okay, so I'm happy with the 21. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Okay, so we can see here that our footer is really taking shape. So what we want to do is... We want to duplicate this, okay? And then drag it into place like that. So you can always go in here and change the links to uh, change these links to, of course, uh, differentiate them from what we have here in the first column. And then over here to the right, we're going to add a text module. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to add a title for that. So I'm just going to copy some dummy text. Paste my text in here. I'm going to make sure I highlight it. And then I'm going to set heading 4 to this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into design, heading text. And then we're going to go to heading 4. We're going to add the color. So we're going to make sure that it's uh, similar to what we have here on, on the other headings. Okay, so that looks close enough. But ideally what you want to do is to go in and copy this and make sure it's the same. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and just continue this way. And then the size as well needs to be the same. Okay, so that's looking great. I've got my heading now. I'm going to save. Next, we are going to add a video module. So I'm going to click this plus button here and search for video. I'm going to add my video here for my from a link for my YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to overlay, click upload, and then I'm just going to get an image from from my media library here and click upload an image. So you can see here that my image has been uploaded and my, now my video is in place. 
Great, so I'm gonna go ahead now and save. So we're not done yet because uh, we also need to make this row the right size that we need because right now it feels like it's a bit too um, narrow. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings, click on design, sizing, and then we're gonna come over here to use custom width. Then we're gonna set this to about 80%. Great, so that's all we need to do for now. I'm gonna save. So now we can see, so now we can see that our row is covering 80% of our site, which is great. So we can see here that this logo is not in line with our heading. So let's go ahead and fix that by using negative margins. So I'm gonna click this gear icon, click on design, spacing, so for the margin to the uh, margin top, I'm going to add minus 20. Okay, so you can see here that it's almost there. In fact, I may want to add minus 30. Yes, perfect. So I think minus 30 is what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, as you can see, I've made it as basic as possible, but you can add even more items in here. You can add an opt-in form. You can add social media share icons and so on so this is just to show you that you can actually go in and customize your footer and make it look the way you want it to look so over here as well i need to adjust my spacing so i'm going to come over here to um, my module settings and add a negative margin as well so i'm going to come over here to spacing so let me try minus 20 okay let's try minus 25 right so i think this is much better i'm going to go ahead now and save Okay, so right now, uh, this only works on this page because I've just designed it for this page. So uh, before I show you how to make this global, we see here that our padding is way too much. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna come over here to our settings, click on design, spacing. So at the moment we have it at 10%, so I'm gonna reduce that to about six. And then I'm gonna do that to the bottom as well and then we're gonna save. So I think this looks much better now. So what you wanna do is you want to save this globally, right? So if I come over here to this little um, icon, I'm gonna click it, and then you can see here we have an option to save this as, in, as a layout name. So I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna say main footer two. And then this is very important. You wanna make sure that you save it as global. Now the reason why you want to do that is because if you decide to go in and change a link, right? If it's saved as a global item, this will update throughout the whole website where this footer has been used. But if you just save it as it is, the problem is you would need to go to each and every page and update that link. So it's advisable that if you're using something like this, it needs to be set as a global item. So I'm gonna select global item. If you want here, you can uh, also create a category. Uh, this is ideal if you have uh, so many items that you're saving onto your library. So for now, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go ahead now and click on Save to Library. Okay, so now it's saved and now we can see that we have a, a different color here. So what I also like doing is to uh, make sure I label it. So I'm going to come over here to my wireframe. And then for this section here, I'm going to go in and name it Main Footer like that. So now I know every time... I'm uh, designing, this is going to be my main footer. Excellent, so now I can go ahead and save. And then we're gonna go back to our visual view. So you can see here our footer looks beautiful. Now let's add it to a different page. So I'm gonna come over here to dashboard, pages, all pages. So I'm gonna add my footer to the home page. So I'm gonna click on edit. Next, I'm gonna click on view page. So you can see here that we don't have a footer. So let's go ahead and add it. So I'm gonna come over here and enable the visual builder. Scroll all the way down. We're gonna click this plus button here to add a new section. But this time, instead of uh, clicking on regular, we're gonna click on add from library. So now we can see this is what we have in the library. So I have main footer two, I'm gonna select it. So that's all you need to do. You don't need to go in and make any changes or any designs. This is fine as it is. So next, we just have to save this page and exit the Visual Builder. 
So now if you scroll all the way down here, we can see we have a footer which will go and uh, show on all our pages that we add this footer on. So the other thing as well that I need to show you is how responsive it is. So I'm gonna come over here to enable builder and then I'm gonna come over here, click on my tablet view. So you can see here that it looks really nice. If I click the uh, mobile view, again, it looks really, really nice. So this is a footer, in my opinion, that you need to add to your website to just give it a, a new look and a professional look. Because if you just rely on the basic footer that comes along with uh, Divi, your website is just gonna look like the standard Divi website out there. So go ahead, customize your footers and make them look really, really awesome. Today's tutorial is made possible by DiviCake.com. Check out their huge selection of Divi themes, layouts, and plugins. The link to that is in the description below. Now, also, if you want to take your design skills to the next level using Divi, I have a course which will teach you everything that you need to know about Divi. So all you got to do is to go to the link that I provided in the show notes below and sign up for that course. And secondly, if you haven't bought Divi yet, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to this course absolutely free. So the links to that is also in the show notes below. So go ahead and check it out. Okay, so we've come to the end of our tutorial. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. By subscribing, you'll be notified every time we release new videos. So until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.